there be another NLC strike soon as Labour and government disagree over the implementation of the minimum wage? Well, this is a question in everybody's mind. And uh, we're just wondering, every time the government makes these promises and they say, oh, come to the table, and then Labour says, we're going to stage a workout. It, it keeps happening. I think I've seen this happen year in, year out. But this time, they're asking that there be a, a percent, certain percentages for the new minimum wage because it's not supposed to be a blanket, you know, raise. Why do you think the government is dragging its feet on this matter? Well, um, I don't speak for the government, and I, I, I think I'll be on the side of I'll be on the side of the people, uh, the Nigerian people, the uh, the people that the civil servants that work across across the country. Mm -hmm. um, some government officials will say that uh, it's difficult for them to raise such money uh, because of uh, their wage, what they, their, their pocket, what they can able to afford, and the rest mm -hmm. of them. But if you look at it, uh, the cost of running government in Nigeria is, is very high. And uh, if they are serious about paying this thing, they can pay it. Uh, I'm talking about the governors, the taxi state governors. But, but the truth is this, we still have to understand the economics part of it because a governor, let's say, from a, uh, in a far place like Zanfara, who claim that the, the allocation that he gets at the end of the day is not close to what a Lagos state uh, governor gets because in terms of uh, IGR, is that a claim or a fact? It, it's a fact. It's a fact. So that could be like that could be like an excuse. But uh, uh, thirty thousand uh, per month, bearing in mind the cost of inflation in this country, uh, the cost of uh, the rising cost of the, the rising inflation, the cost of food uh, at, at market at the rest of the at, at the end of the day. So uh, I think it's fair that what civil servants are asking is fair. Thirty thousand naira is not a big deal. We have governors already that are trying to do do this. So they don't have two heads. So a, a governor that's saying that this is this is too much for me, what are you doing with your security votes? What are you doing with some of the allocations that you just, you just, you just... Oh, don't go there. No, we should go there because at the end of the day, if they want to pay... This... Well, they'll tell you that security votes are for security things if, if, and they cannot and, be... And, it's for, and you, they cannot divulge that information to you. So it's more like pouring water in the back of a chicken. But, but, but that, that, that's, 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 like I said, that's legality that they're using to commit corruption, to make sure that corruption thrives in our, in our society, because uh, there's no need that was, there's no need for us to have an opaque uh, 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 system where uh, you are not accountable to people that voted you in. Right? For example, we just made mention of uh, security food, but we've been talking about River State. You are a governor, you sit in River State, right? in, a, in an oil-rich region. You have security votes every day. You have money coming to you every, every month, wherever how they do the allocation. And you can't just pro you can't protect your citizens. Women are dying every day. And you drive around calling yourself uh, Mr. Project. It does not make sense. So the same way, if we bring it down to, the, to all the taxi state governors, even those that feel that because of the economies or, or because what, what Lagos get, we don't get in terms of IG and rest of them. If a thinking governor that, that is accountable to the people, that you understand most importantly, that I'm here for the people, you can squeeze and make sure that the people that work every day to make sure that the organs of government are functioning at all levels, they should get this pay. Because at the end of the day, the government is not providing, uh, they, they, some, some, of them, some of them are not being provided with some social amenities that can make their life better. So this is the money that they need to take care of themselves and their family. So, uh, do I foresee a strike because of go governor, uh, government refusal to do this? It's possible, but the truth is this: uh, strike is, is is allowed in, is allowed in democracy. It's an effective tool to get government to listen to you. If government at all levels, the whole artistic, are not willing to listen. I'm sorry. Uh, let's rewind. <laughs> Maybe before now, strike yeah. was a thing that could pull the hand of government, but we've seen that happen over time. How effective has it been? It is very effective. In the past few months, even last year, how effective has it been? It, 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 is, a, it is effective. The doctors have gone, the, and the, the uh, Johesu went on yeah, strike. Yeah, the joint uh, health worker. NMA was. went on strike. Labor, the labor union, organized labor went, went on strike. TUC attempted to go on strike. We've not really seen, yes, they would say we're going to back to the negotiation table, but does it yield anything at the end of the day? But I, I, I think for me, I want to see, I don't want to see it like on a linear perspective, right? I mean, sometimes things should be seen from a binary point of view, because the truth is, is what do they have? What do they say what someone have at the end of the day? Nothing. They can sue. They can't sue the government because at the end of the day, the governors, they have immunity. You can't even sue them. You can ask questions. And also, they're supposed to be neutral. They're supposed to do part of the civil service. So there's service. no bargaining chip? So they have a bargaining chip because at the end of the day, the, civil, the, the, govern, the government can't function without, without the civil service. Government at all levels, be it at the local level, at the federal level, at the state level, it can't function without the civil service. So uh, the fact is that the problem is this, and I think I need to point it out, is that, uh, that the labor union so far in this country have 
have we have people that led this labor union over the last the last few years. People that I will say uh, they profit from the pain of the common civil servants that, that work in the offices in different offices across the country. Because at the end of the day, uh, you are a labor leader and you're going into a negotiation with the government. All right, and they're giving you things, and they give make, make, making it to feel warm and welcome in their house. They bring drinks, they bring things, they give you a pause when you are going home, a brand envelope to go home to say thank you for coming. At the end of the day, there is no see, there, there is no um, do you, motivation. Do, do you see these brown envelopes being taken? How do you know this? How do I know this? I've had some civil, civil servants that confided in me in the past say this. But my late father used to be a civil servant, so it's not it's not it's not for uh, for us to say to deny this thing. We've seen in the past. The, the thing is that labor union need to understand that you're a labor union. You're not a government worker. You're not there to defend a Samolu. You're not there to defend uh, a marking day in your, your state. Is it, you are there for the, the interest of the people. Is it the itself or the leaders of these the, unions? The, the leaders... Because so the, the, I mean, I, I belong to the NUJ. I don't ex necessarily know what the leaders of the NUJ do. Be because they failed in their primary responsibility to carry you along, to let you know what is happening, to, know, to let you know about your interests. Uh, for example, we have journalists in, the, in this country that has been uh, uh, kidnapped. We haven't seen them for a long while. All right. Uh, yesterday we had uh, like a, a, a media house in Lagos was was harassed. What is NUJ doing about it? You know, see, the fact is that we're in a country where someone feels that if it's happening to me, you can plead maybe the blood of whatever you believe in, the blood of animal, whatever you believe in, that you'll be fine, you'll be protected in your house till it comes to your place. The fact is that the girls are supposed to help. For example, the NUJs, uh, the NLC, the Norge, the Norge that is for the local government employees and yes. the rest of them, they should come to a place where the leaders understand. Most importantly, you are there because there is an election that brought you in, so you are there for. The people that brought you here, they have to serve their interests. So I believe that if NU, NLC, uh, uh, Norge at all level decide to say the government will want you to pay this money, they can pay it. But my pain is this that sometimes, you see, you see, uh, the civil servants that don't have access to governors, to uh, high ranking government officials, they might agree to go on this protest. They will be hungry. One month, two months, nothing has happened. Three months, because you know, some of them don't even have savings. They're going, they're going into, a, they're going in for a strike. Whereas their leaders, who are supposed to protect their own interests, we have to call them out. It's, it's not like they're not doing the right thing. When they go into the governors, when they go into the negotiators with, uh, from the, on the government side, they do a lot of crazy stuff that is not allowed. So at the end of the day, they can, they can, they can cut a poor deal. And at the end of the day, the people. But the, is that not a, is, is that not the fault of the people who are members of these unions? Because. I mean, is that not even a replica of what is happening in Nigeria? So your leaders take whatever, you know, um, decision and you don't question it. You don't ask how this is going to be beneficial to you. And if it's not beneficial to you, nobody pushes for more. Well, let's see, I, I, know, I know it's easy for us to sometimes to blame. Because you just made mention. There is a journalist that is being held in Cross River State by the government illegally. And they're saying that, oh, you know, he, it's... <laughs> treason yeah. or whatever. There are journalists who have been held, there are journalists who've been killed. We've never heard of the NUJ protesting or pushing be, 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 on behalf of those people. So maybe we have misplaced priorities. No, it's, it's, not, it's not misplaced priorities. So why in a country that we don't care about each other? We are looking after ourselves. Or I, I can mention to you some of the... So why be in a union if no, the union be, be, doesn't be, care about you? Because that is all they have. We have to get that. That is all they have. And at the end of the day, like you said, when they go into the negotiation, it might not be enough. Even if just to get government to put a thousand naira on the money that, 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 that the civil servants are earning, it's something. Because, as, because that is, we need to see it from their, from their own point of view. These are people that have been broken. These are people that have been brutalized over a long period of time. This is all they have. So at the end of the day, it's easy for us to say that they're not doing their part. But who are citizens? Media houses who have to say, okay, what is happening? I will ask the right questions. If a labor leader comes in here, what are you doing? What, what is the negotiation? We need to understand. It's not easy to sit because, for example, uh, the current chairman of, of, of APC was a labor leader. Chris Ngige used to be a labor leader. All right, so at the end of the day, these guys, they're in government and they're serving the same government that's supposed to protect their own people. We see, these are the questions we're supposed to ask at the end of the day. So I have no issue with a poor person that doesn't even understand his or her right, that collects like 19,800 or 20,000, that does not even understand his A, a or, or B. So, so I'm sympathetic to that person because the person doesn't understand everything. So it is in our own place that understand it a little bit to help them to say, okay, government, what is happening? And since we start, because at the end of the day, Civil service tells a lot about ourselves because when you go to, when you go to do something, let's say at immigration, at, at the police office, at anywhere, at, at all level, you complain because there is bad service. Sometimes you be there for three hours, four hours, you can't even use the restroom. You know why? Because at the end of the day, these people are a reflection of who we are as a society. They are not going to change themselves if we don't start asking the right question. Because if the civil service is right, you go in there, get the right service from them, and you yourself will be happy. They will be happy themselves because they are doing a good job. But it is not. So sometimes we feel that it's NLC. 
I'm working does not concern me. But for example, uh, over the last over the last few uh, few days, we've, we've seen there was a Kaduna festival, right? In Kaduna, a book festival where writers, uh, journalists, and the rest of them went to Kaduna to a state where students are missing for the last 40 days. Journalists, writers went there to sit down with the governor. So you see that the people that are supposed to ask the right questions are not asking the right questions. But I said we have because, misplaced priorities. No, because we are trying to benefit from a tyranny of evil. That is the problem. If we start calling each other up and say, this is not right, this is not good, whether it's your friend or your sister, because sometimes you feel like, uh, there's, there's a quote when they say, it's happening to your neighbor, you, you don't care. When it starts happening to you, you start shouting. So at the end of the day, when we see evil at all level, NLC is not doing their part. You're in a media house, you, you get the chance to meet this person, say, what are you doing? What, what, so what is the argument? What is the question? Because at the end of the day, these civil servants, they deserve the 30,000, and every governor in this country, every governor in this country can pay Thirty thousand as minimum wage. It's not enough. They buy cars every day. They buy cars for their wife. Some of them buy for their girlfriends. Some of them buy for their men friend. Is possible they can pay this money? It's okay. possible. Well, if you want to be part of our conversation on social media, please send your comments on these stories via social media. Uh, leave your comment on our YouTube page or Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. Well, that's uh, the conversation for today. I want to say thank you. Uh, Ugochukui Kaka is a political analyst. Thank you for speaking thank with us. Me. We appreciate it. Well, before we go, uh, I would like to give you my take. Now, it's very important when we talk about lives and property. The number one duty of any leader is to protect the lives and the properties of the people in that space. Those detail for the governors and detail for the local government chairman because they have been given that responsibility. Now if people in your city, in your state, are dying with reckless abandon and nobody has been able to speak up about it, even the police is administering medicine after death and giving it a name that, oh, it's prostitution and that's what we have to start placing value on the lives of human beings, especially women, because women are vulnerable. Yes, I know that a lot of people will not like this, but women are vulnerable. Call it whatever name it is, human beings have been strangled and killed in hotel rooms. The police has to get to the bottom of this matter. The governor of River State, Governor Yeston Wiki, has to make sure that the lives of these people will not go in vain. Justice must prevail. And for the NLC and the organized labor, please, government, federal and state, a worker deserves his pay. Let's regularize the 30,000 minimum wage and do right by our workers. They cannot continue like this. I mean, we've had endless strikes over the years. Let's make Nigeria work for once, for you and for me. I'm Mary Anikul. Have a great day.